this episode of Beer Circus, we're in England visiting our friends at Buxton Brewery, about a three-hour train ride north of London. We started the brewery in 2009. It's a small scale, very small batch brew house. And we were brewing originally on like a little 100 liter test kit. We then stretched up to an 800 liter, sort of five UK barrels brew plant. And we've just moved ourselves up to a new 4,000 liter kit. That's where we're at right now, but four years ago, obviously we were brand new and just starting out. So it took a while to get going, but we've been very pleased with how things have gone. The beers are really in high demand, which is obviously a great position to be in. The brewery is located in Derbyshire, in the town of Buxton. Buxton's actually quite a prosperous, hard-working town. It's actually the highest market town in England. It's over a thousand feet in altitude above sea level. Consequently, we're blessed with lots of weather. <laughs> Not much of it good, unfortunately. It's generally quite cold and it rains a lot. How bad can a little rain be? I believe actually in 2009 it rained every day of the year in Buxton. We have had a little bit of rain today, just even while we're out filming. It's uh, rich with weather, but very rich in other ways as well. Despite the rain, Buxton is a beautiful town full of the arts and majestic buildings. It's kind of weird, it's almost like it's taking a step back into town, even from the train station. You walk down past the old courthouse, the opera house. A lot of the buildings are sort of old Victorian townhouses, uh, so there's a lot of very big buildings, a lot of very big architecture going on in the town. And in the center of town is the oldest hotel in Britain, dating back to the 1500s. But Buxton's history goes back much farther. It's a Roman town, it's very historic. The Romans were there because there's a warm water spring right in the center of town. And Buxton is well known in the UK for its, its mineral water, which is one of the reasons why I thought it'd be great to open a brewery there as well. It's also right in the middle of the Peak District National Park, which is bang in the center of, of England. So we get a lot of visitors to the town and in fact something like 40% of the population of the UK live within about an hour of, of where we are. It's so central so it's, it's a good place to have a business yet at the same time it's extremely rural and it's beautiful rolling hillside, countryside. But there's another reason why Jeff opened his brewery here. Jeff's a big climber and uh, Derbyshire is like the ideal place to live if you like climbing and potholing. You know, there's landscape like this everywhere, and nice big crags and things. I do a lot of climbing, it's one of the reasons I moved to that area. It's brilliant. It's a real passion of mine. It's a good way for me to relax and switch my brain off from running the, the company and just concentrate on one thing. Jeff's passion has also influenced the beer. A lot of the beers we make are named after and a lot of them are themed on the local area. And it's a happy coincidence that many of the names of these places are very interesting names. Probably a Darb like flagship beer, it's called Axe Edge, which is based on Axe Edge Moor. It's big and sort of domineering, it sort of comes out of nowhere and I guess that's what Axe Edge was kind of based on. It. We have many others that were sort of named uh, uh, similarly on, upon the local area as well. There's Murtop, which is one of the hills you can see out beyond us here. We have barley wine called The Sloth, which is a really super classic rock climb in the Peak District, only 10 minutes drive for, from Buxton. We've just done a new sour called uh, Far Skyline, which is based on an actual, uh, there's a row of climbing hills. There's the skyline, well, there's far skyline, and there's even further skyline. We've just done the far skyline, which is like going to be sort of the, the first of a, a series of beers based around the same idea. Black Rocks is, is named after a climbing venue and High Tour, which is like our sort of big uh, Imperial Red Ale, which is 6.3%. So yeah, it's a, it's a real good source of interesting names for us and it saves us having to think of new things all the time. We arrive up at the brewery just in time for the start of their brew day. 
Our morning jobs would usually be come in, uh, get the brew house set up. So when you arrived in this morning, I was just starting to uh, sterilise the copper. So we run, through, run that through with hot caustic and do that then while we're mashing. I've loaded the colours and the specialty malts into the grist case. I've loaded in whatever will fit into that basically, and then the rest of the, the bags we keep to one side. And uh, then we uh, begin the mashing process where we mix the malts with hot liquor. It comes in about sort of 72 degrees and evens out, so sort of, we get like a 68 degree mash. Jake's up there now. He's just going to finish kegging off some uh, fresh axe edge and then he will clean a fermenter for me, which I'm hoping he's doing right now. What exactly are they brewing this morning? We've just brewed a brand new beer this morning, as yet unnamed, I'm sure we'll find a, a local mountain to, <laughs> to pin that to. The beer will be Nth Cloud, named after, you guessed it, a rock outcropping near the brewery. It's an IPA I've, I've kind of been toying with. We were actually going to be brewing our barley wine today, and Dennis came to me a couple of days ago and said, oh, do you know what, I think guys like a, like a double IPA. Like, what, like, like our old double IPA? He was like, no, no, just make a new one. Perfect, we'll do. So we uh, threw a recipe together yesterday for to sort of pull together these sort of vague ideas I have in my mind. Then, the, yeah, today's the day we get to make all that come to fruition. <laughs> Just how many people does it take to make this come to fruition? So at the brewery currently, there are four of us working on the shop floor. There's myself, I'm head brewer. Then there's Jake, who's my, my second brewer. And he looks after the main part of the brew and a lot of the uh, processing down the line. We then have two other guys, sort of, and their driver, who helps out as and when he's available. And Scott, who uh, used to work at BrewDog, and he's down helping us at the moment. And then in the office, we have three guys, Jeff, who obviously owns the company and sort of looks after making sure we stay in business. Dennis, myself and him work quite closely on a lot of the idea development and uh, a lot of the beers and our ideas of where we want the beers to go. And Charlotte, who is there to stop us all going mad <laughs> by uh, generally being saying I'm bringing in good coffee. After our visit to the brewery, we went for a short hike through the grim low woods up to the symbol of Buxton. The logo of the brewery is called Solomon's Temple and was built in the late 1800s. It's a Victorian folly built on the top of a hill, just literally outside Buxton. Most places in Buxton, if you look up to the hills, you, you can see it. While the tower is only decorative, it is actually built on a barrow, a Bronze Age burial mound. Buxton's quite a rich town and it was brought up sort of on the Victorian mining trade and when the trade wasn't doing quite so well. A wealthy merchantman who lived in Buxton put the unemployed men of the town to work to build this tower just for something for them to do. So we could basically pay them to do a job. It took a lot of work because it's made of solid limestone and it had to be sort of carried up to the top of the hill. I imagine it was quite an arduous job to get it up there and get it built. But they persevered and they did it and they made quite a wonderful job of it as well. It was quite, the, uh, quite a lovely little tourist attraction. It's very characteristic landmark in the town, so it's a fitting uh, emblem to have for, for our logo. On a good day, it's a wonderful place to go. You just kind of walk up through this nice grassy hill and uh, when you get up there you get a very good view of around the area. Uh, so it's really good, really nice sort of friendly atmosphere to the place. Yeah, it's not a bad place to live at all. What every nice town needs is a great pub. I've just moved out of Buxton myself, but when I first moved, there wasn't really anywhere to go and get a good beer. There were a couple of pubs that served our beer, but it tended to not be looked after particularly well. So they decided to open their own. It was always part of our business plan to open our own bar. And at the beginning of 2013, a really good venue became available. The space they found was in the Edwardian Old Courthouse, 
right in the middle of town. It was a little harder than we thought to, to actually transform it into what it is today. It took us about six or eight months to get all the work done. And yeah, we transformed it into what we think is a really good craft beer bar now. So on the 6th of September last year, after a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of planning, we finally got the tap house open. There's not really anything like it in the whole area, never mind just the town, it's very, it's very different. We have usually 13, 14 beers on draft and uh, 80 to 100 bottle beers. Opening a pub was not without its risks. We were a bit worried craft beer was a bit of an urban phenomenon that would never really work somewhere like this, that would be a bit too far out for people. The beer we make is not particularly mainstream and uh, lots of people around the town are used to drinking more generic industrial uh, beers. Very happy to say it's been really well uh, received by the people of the town. Turnover's really good, our beers have been very well received. It's very nice to see the local people coming in and drinking the beer. It's really heartening to know that people are open to a sort of wider experience. Oh, that's great. It's a great place to have and yeah, I'm really pleased with it.